TJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy to manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. We're back. Well, I said it was going to be 9.05, and it's 9.09, so that means we're four minutes into the show. So all the clever things, we've already said them. Four minutes 9.09 was a rolling drum machine, I believe. Wasn't the 8.08? 808, 808, yes. The 9.08, yeah. the 9.09, yes. So we're tying it in. So look at these tie-ins. This is absolutely Tried. excellent. Yes. Thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight, this is going to be a little bit of a different show from the standpoint is that we were going to kind of lead a discussion and talk about five things that that a new DJ, what some of the first things they need to know, the people who are getting into this, what are some of the topics or parts of a business that they need to know to be successful in the startup? And this is what we want to do is we want to have this be kind of an open dialogue with the, you in the chat room that you guys can throw some of the things out that you think are, are very important. And I want to compile a list. And then we're going to kind of put it into that perspective. And by the end of the show, have those five things that should be kind of, you know, one, two, three, four, and five when you're starting up your DJ business. I wrote down five things. I, I figured you'd have your have a nice little list. And then they're going to add some things. And then we're going to vote them up and vote them off the island. And it'll be absolutely fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't know. It's, this is all opinion. Yeah, exactly. And, this is just a discussion night. Uh, and right. Of course, it's, it's not anything written in stone, although I probably would argue some of my points to the death. But Nice. That's what we want to hear. We want to hear passion, excitement. Yeah. And, and as we talked about in with Ben's show, next week is our DJ Hangout Week, so our shows all change because it's more live chat. Next Tuesday at 9 o'clock Eastern on the Ben Stowe time. Uh, Brian and Ben are going to be c coming to you guys together. They're going to be talking about all sorts of things, answering your questions. If you had questions tonight about wireless mics, which there were a ton of them, you can bring those in. Brian will give you Brian's answer. Ben will speak geek. Brian will I'll interpret, translate, translate best I can. And if, if I understand what he's saying at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the Ben Show featuring Brian. Yes. That's what John meaning to say exactly I'm practicing so, for next week so that will be next uh, next at next week Tuesday night because um, Tuesday night next week we were going to have um, at at 8 a 8 a.m 8 p.m Eastern we've got Ron Ruth the Ron Ruth show and then um, the Ben Ben featuring Brian or is it Brian featuring yeah yeah ben, there the we go. Ben show featuring there we go Ben Stowe show featuring and, and Brian. then and then the the reason we're gonna after after us old guys are, are all done with our shows, then we got the young guys. We've got Brandon Havrilla, uh, DJ Barr, and DJ Rick Webb. The three guys are going to be coming, and they're going to be talking shop and such. After after the rest of us have gone to bed, the young guys take the floor, and they go, they will go crazy for a while. I think that's what the plan is. So anyway, we'll, we'll uh, take a look at that, and if we need to change times and such, we'll uh, let you know on how those all go. So that will be next week. Okay. So um, let's, uh, okay, I just want to make sure I've got my chat, my chat rooms open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share that for those of you on Facebook. It's not going very quickly, so I'm going to share the YouTube link in Facebook so that way you have that. If you want to jump there where we'll be following the chat, I can't even paste the stupid link in. Ugh. I don't know why, why, why Facebook does that to me. It's just so putty. My eyes are bothering me because I'm doing eye makeup tonight because I'm tired of people telling me I look tired. <laughs> so, no, I'm not tired. I'm just ugly and old. <laughs> yeah. 
it happens. Well, it does. It 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 does. So so now the eye makeup is making my eyes water, but I'm giving it a try. So give, before we get to into make people happy, before we get into tonight's talking about the the five the early things, give us a dungeon update. Where are we at? Oh, uh, it's coming along. Uh, as you can see, I my my thumb's still recovering from the records. I'm I'll get more in there soon. Um, it, it's starting to look like it's supposed to. Yeah, it's it definitely looking. I've, I've seen some pictures and such here. It looks like it's come together very, very well. I've DMXed the entire room. Very nice. So I have a controller that's not at my reach. I've also made this desk, except for the lighting controller, a right-handed desk. So, or, I mean, sorry, a left-handed, left-handed desk, handed, which yeah. was a right-handed desk. I built it before my stroke. Now that I have a stroke, I kept reaching over for things. Mm-hmm. Not any. Pardon me. Not anymore. It's all right here at my left. So that I did. Um, just trying to keep things clean. Uh, added some more sound to the desk. I'm having fun. Yeah. You know, but it's taken me time. Like yesterday, my daughter surprised me. She came over and, and uh, got me out of bed. I was sleeping. And she was here until probably 1130 last night. So I didn't do anything except uh, run DMX cable down here. And then today we were running around doing things, so I didn't do much down here today. So I'm doing it as I can, still trying to get stuff out of the back room. There's a lot of stuff that's just going to go away. It's not going to make it back in here. New stuff's coming. It'll it'll be nice. It's I wasn't ready to give the place a facelift, but it was ridiculous not to, since there was the Panama Canal in the middle of the thing, and yeah. I had to redo a lot of stuff anyway to not just go the step further and redo stuff. So. Okay, I have one question, and then uh, we've got a, okay. qu- a question in the chat. Carpet, how did they end up doing that? Because you've got a post right in the middle of the room. Did they end up slicing and then just wrapping around, or did they basically lay it in two pieces? It's two pieces. Okay. Um, actually, our nephew does it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, well, Blanca's niece's husband, uh, Jim. He's always done our carpet. He mm-hmm. did it when we first got the house. And that's how he does it. It's It's in two pieces. So... All right, here, construction stuff. The room is 12.3 feet wide by 23. So if you know anything about carpet, it comes in 12-foot rolls. So we're three inches too wide for a 12-foot roll. So you've got to go with a 25-foot roll of carpet because then you want to put 24 feet wide and you cut it in half. Mm -hmm. It'll be 12.5 feet. Voila, there you go. I know way too much about this crap. I've done it too many times. Yeah, you've, you've had to deal with it. Okay, uh, then the second question, Chris is asking if you used, uh, if you replaced your old um, DMX wires and put new stuff in, or did you go with repurposing the older ones? Well, I used some new stuff, um, but I used all of my old stuff. I have, I think, one DMX cable left. Oh, in geez. fact, I ordered more today. And... Uh, <clears throat> the other thing I'm, I added a FPT subwoofer to the desk because I had one and I'm getting a new one in like a week. So I'm going to get rid of this old one and put a new one under here, a new FPT subwoofer. Believe it or not, I'll use it for gigs too, but when it's not being used for gigs, it's going to be uh, enhancing the monitors. Of course, I've got it like on one, if that, because mm-hmm. otherwise my turntables jump out of the holes that they're sitting in on my desk. Yes, but uh, it was cabling on that that was really tripping me out because I've got old mic cable on there. It's actually too long. And I've got these beautiful Speco cables. I love them. They don't tangle. They're the right length and everything else. But they're my favorite audio cables. If I time up on my studio desk, I can't use them for demos or on the road. Sure. So I'm going to be ordering more Speco probably tomorrow or tonight, and I'll I'll be. Yeah, I, I want to go all the spec on my audio stuff. This old junk I have. Remember at Guitar Center, you can go in there and you could buy like a, a 25-foot XLR cable for $14. Mm, yeah. well, I had a lot of those. Sure. And you can tell. Because sometimes things don't work as they should. They're not as loud as they should be. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, that, 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 that was one of my cable dilemmas, too. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm doing an install. I want it to look nice. Ah, but I don't want to sacrifice these Bespecos to the desk. I really want to use them for other things. So I'm just getting more. I have to. There you are. Do right. That's right. Go that bigger, way, go home. That way uh, you're not having to dig it, dig, it, uh, dig it apart a little later and say, why is this bad cable? 
Well, it just looks like hell. I could get the right length, or I could take these 25 footers and wrap them up, and they sound like hell and everything else. Trying to keep it clean. Don't want to upset anybody with cable management issues on the desk. Yeah, so. Jimmy. Yeah, I'm working on it. Cool, cool. All right, let's jump into our topic tonight of, sure. of things that so the five things that a new DJ needs to know. What do you have first on your list? And let's talk about that. Okay, well, first of all, before we even get into this, yes. If I say something you're gonna say, are you just gonna say, yeah, that was on my list too? No, 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 no. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm moderating tonight. So. Oh, so yeah. it's just my five things. It's your I five thought you things, were gonna come up with five things. They're gonna come well. out. They're gonna come out with things, and that's where we're gonna compile uh, the list. So that's why I've got to be able to do the chat and basically everything that everyone says. I'm gonna say sucks. So I'm just that person tonight. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so just before I even get into the number one thing, this is life according to me. Mm -hmm. So. This is what I think. This isn't gospel. This isn't what, uh, if you didn't do this or you're not doing this, it's not a shame on you thing. This is, these are just my thoughts and opinions on yeah. the subject. Since mm -hmm. you threw it at me like a hand grenade this morning. I you're welcome. Really, hey, I gave you like three or four hours notice. That's like, sure. that's a long time. No, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So number one on my list, the, well, the first thing on my list, I should say, mm -hmm. is know your music. This is the kind of thing that. I feel like people who get into it should have the aptitude for or the love of music and not just perhaps one genre or two genres, but, but many genres. Old, new, whatever. That's the kind of stuff that you need to know. You just have a general, uh, I wouldn't even say a, a, a better than average comprehension and knowledge of popular music, I think, is a must. So and that's a, that's a great uh, a great point because now I've got my 15 year old who is, knows obviously his music, and he's practicing because he's ready. He's going to be doing a couple mm -hmm. of gigs here this spring. How important is it for a 15 year old DJ who's going to be doing some high school dances and such to know? And you know how far back? Because we've had this discussion. You know, oldies for us was one thing at one time, and now for him, oldies is a completely different realm. Yeah, well, I struggle you'll find this. out. Yeah, I struggle with this. Is how much do I need to be, you know, okay, oh, Michael, you need to know this, 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 and this, compared to, well, you know, here's one or two from this era that you might get run into. You know, it's one of those things where I don't feel like it's so much you're studying for a test. I feel like it's something that you should want to know. This, is, this should be your aptitude. This should be something that you're interested in to do this thing of ours. If you're into something else more than you're into music, you should do that other thing. That's just what I think. It, you know, it just doesn't make sense to get into this unless you really love music mm -hmm. and, and have, have a, a, a better than average knowledge of music. You want to know more about music than your audience does in general. Now there might be somebody in your audience that knows more about reggae than you do. Right. But that person won't know about all the other things that you know about different types of music. If you understand what I said, I'm saying, you know, yeah. you don't have to be an expert in everything. It's, it's not what I'm suggesting at all. But, but an interest in it and an aptitude for the love of it, I think, is so important to, to get into this. Otherwise, there's so many other things you could do and there's a lot easier ways to make money. That there is, that there is. So I'm thinking back to when we started and music being more difficult to get and get a hold of and you couldn't get some things on. Mm -hmm. So my knowledge of music and, and we've had this conversation where the early country was, you know, this CD, or, you know, a song of this CD or this CD. He doesn't have that advantage, but could a DJ in this day and age get away with knowing that, OK, if I'm going to play oldies, I'm going to play one of these four songs. These are my oldies tracks and knowing these tracks and knowing how to work them and mix them in. Could a person do that where you basically have to point your show and your knowledge of, of a set of songs, even though they may, there are many other great songs, but could they function well enough just knowing a set of songs that they can mix well together? You can get by, sure. Of course you can. You can always just get by with the, 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 the minimum amount of, of knowledge or effort, but it's nice to be able to go beyond that. And to me, it just feels like, again, you know, yeah, of course. Okay, I've got the, the hot country CD, and I've got the hot 80s CD, and I've got the hot 70s CD. Not if it's a CD anymore, but you downloaded the collection. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that, I guess, but 
I don't know. Then maybe you don't love music. You know, maybe you just love your music. And who doesn't love their music? Everyone loves their music. Yeah. So you're really no different than anybody else at that point, it seems to me. Okay, for those, uh, for those of you putting ideas and such in the chat, I'm copying those down. We're going to talk about those after Brian goes through his list because there might be some of those that I can incorporate into his list as he's going along. So don't, uh, Larry, I got yours down, and we'll, we'll get back to discuss that because I don't want to be discussing one of those if that's one that Brian already has, and then we can tie into it. <laughs> so, so keep throwing ideas and such what you think are, should be on the, the list of five. They're all mad us. Yep. So know your music. I, that's a wonderful. And, and from the chat room... I think you've got a lot of people who agree with you wholeheartedly. We'll take it a step further with the second thing mm -hmm. on my list. Empathy. Mm. So you must have empathy, I feel, to be in this business or any service business for that matter. And, and what I mean by that is let's tie it back into know your music thing. We should probably understand not only what we like and people like us enjoy, but what our parents enjoy and what our siblings enjoy and what our children enjoy. And understand that maybe what motivates us isn't going to motivate them. So we need to think about what's going to motivate them. Again, knowing the music and understanding how people respond to it. Mm -hmm. It's the empathy. I mean, there's so much more to the empathy thing. It could be when you're DJing, when you're gigging, maybe you're at a wedding reception. Maybe not everybody's dancing. Do you get upset? Do you turn the music up? Do you try to force people out of their chairs? Or do you pay attention to what's going on? Maybe this is a family that hasn't seen each other for a long time. Maybe they're engaged in conversation. Maybe they're tapping their feet. Maybe they're having a great time. They just don't want to come out on the dance floor. Maybe you're playing all the right music. But... Nothing's going to get him on the dance floor. Nothing's more important to them than catching up. Right. You need to understand this. And to understand this, you need to empathize with these people. Where are they? What brings them here today? What is the relationship with the other people in this room? That's all part of the empathy thing that I feel is so important. So let's take Brian and Brad back 25, 30 years to when he was a young DJ just getting started out. Mm -hmm. Would empathy have even been on your radar that concept. Yeah, yeah, it would. And yeah. I'll tell you why. And I've talked about this before. Uh, and, and music's always been a big deal to me. I said something about disco the other day, and somebody older than me chimed in and said, I listen to disco as one of my hobbies, <laughs> just to be funny, you know. But I, I do love listening to disco, and most of it's sample spotting, but I love it. And so I said, Well, you're a little, you, you were born, you know, too late to list disco as your hobby. And I'm like, No, I was there. Mm -hmm. And I remember it. I remember hearing Hughes Corporation rock the boat drop out, you know, for the first time on the radio. And I remember what my mom liked. And I remember what my dad liked, which was nothing like what my mom liked. Dad liked country, like Hee Haw was his show. Uh -huh. And mom liked stylistics and she liked Bee Gees and she liked, you know, things like that. Even like Dionne War, which is like soulful stuff. And then I had a big sister who really was into Barry Manilow and Linda Ronstadt and Rod Stewart, all the pop standards. I had a younger sister, not younger than me, but the younger of the sisters, who was into more of the edgy stuff. You know, she was into the police and the cars, kind of the new wave stuff, really early new wave kind of stuff. And Peter Frampton, even, she liked him. Then my brother was Ted Nugent, Van Halen, and Led Zeppelin. So when we're driving down the road in the car and the radio is on, it's interesting to see who's responding well to what. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I, everyone always kind of responded well to, or you did, may not have said anything, but they were okay with it, was when an Eagle song came on. Because it's kind of rock. It's kind of pop. It's kind of country. Yep. The early stuff was kind of country. Oh, yeah. It's got to be. This was something everybody could agree with. So even as a child, I was having this musical empathy for people and understanding what motivated them and what they liked. Sure. I'm weird. I'm not normal. But I still think this is an important thing to have. And, and I, I, I absolutely had it. I didn't have it for everyone. But I understood that everybody wasn't into what I was into. And, and since day one, I've played songs that I didn't want to play as a DJ. Yeah. Because I didn't like them. Mm -hmm. But it didn't matter because somebody else wanted to hear it. 
<laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do, yeah. There we go. Just sharing, yeah, getting getting some stuff copied and such. So, so empathy. That's that's that is a, so important. It, it is very important. I guess I wouldn't have put that in my my top top five, and it it is. It's it was a complete over oversight on my part. No, it's okay. You didn't make a top five. I made the top five. You put it all on me. So I try to do a good job for you. That, that's what we like to hear. <clears throat> Oh, we've got a lot of great, great tips and, and such in uh, in the chat room. So those of you who are watching this after the chat, you're not seeing any of the great words of advice coming in the chat room here on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, you're not seeing it either. And I have the link link on the um, in the chat on Facebook. You can find it and grab it. So great stuff. We're going to cover those once we get through Brian's list here because we've got some good, good stuff here. All right. So should I just keep tying in? Keep, things keep going. You're doing wonderful. Remember when I said I played music that, that I didn't necessarily want to play because yeah. I was being, you know, trying to be empathetic, mm -hmm. playing what they liked. You know why I did that? Because <laughs> this is a job. You need to understand that this is a job. It's not the me show. It's not about us all the time. It's a job, and we're being hired to provide a service, be it to our wedding clients, be it to our bar patrons, or whoever we have to be performing for. So it's not the me show. It's a job. That doesn't mean you can't be entertaining. Mm -hmm. That means you can't be a, so many people like, okay, for instance, Scott Carroll in here was on the radio. I'm sure when Scott was on, especially when Scott was on the radio, he was almost a character. Mm -hmm. You know, when he was announcing things, that's what radio jocks did. Yeah. Wolfman Jack was a character. And to this day, people know who that guy is. It's, yeah, for sure. It's a certain guy, you know. Casey Kasem was a character. They were uh, everybody's a character, and, and so it's not you're, it's not that you can't be entertaining, and, and have people look at you at any given point in time, but there must be a purpose for it, and and because it's a job, mm -hmm. it's not the me show. And yet, that's one of the when I talk to younger DJs who are getting up there, the first thing they want to do is basically create that persona, and then they want to make it about me. I, I, is it probably the best way to describe it? It's uh, you know, it's the you know the DJ DJ Snazzy Sneaker Show, and everyone should come to see DJ sn Snazzy sp Sneakers. That's tougher <laughs> to say than I thought when I made that. And it it, it becomes it's a, a an occupational hazard. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. So they're they're making it all about them, and you see, and maybe that's maybe that's the line between more of a mobile and more of a club is that they have to make that that persona to sell that persona to get people in the door. Da, 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 compared to as a mobile, we're here to facilitate. Well, we're entertainers. I, I don't want to make it sound like that we're supposed to just shut up and and play what everybody else wants. And no, we're supposed to be ourselves, and we're we're supposed to entertain, and we're supposed to express, but to the benefit of others because it's a job you know it's it, perfor performance art uh so, some things may not have their place <laughs> mm -hmm. in what we're doing some things may though i mean you know but but at the end of the day again it's a job whatever you do be it your persona or your song selection or what you say on the microphone or what you provide for equipment at the event with your lighting or anything else should be to the client's benefit Mm -hmm. More so than yours. Cool. Very nice. Uh, it's just what I think. No, Again, I the world according to Brian. That's that's not a bad world. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Yeah, pretty much. But that, you know, we get over those moments. Yeah, be the dark star. Howie told me this a while back. He was talking about his name, Dark Star, mm -hmm. and why he chose it. People ask his clients, say, why do they call you Dark Star? He says, because that's what I am. I'm in the background. I'm the dark star. You're the bright star. You're up front. It's about you. I'm the dark star. I'm just pulling the strings, making it happen. Neat. That's a neat way to describe it. Yeah, very nice way to describe it. I've, I've described it as the, the director when I've had a couple that are into sports, kind of talking about the, the uh, person who's you know, like a referee at a basketball game. If they're doing their job, no one really knows that they're there. And yet they're running, keeping the flow of the game going and making sure everything's doing and going right. But if they're doing their job and doing it right, no one pays attention to the referees. Yeah. 
Yeah. But if you suck, then everybody knows the referee. Or the so. boxing coach or anybody else. Yeah, you know, yeah, the guy the guy in the corner is the guy in the corner. You're watching Rocky, not 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 Mickey in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Mickey's just a figure in the side. Again, just part of it. it and and you're not always just the puppet master. Sometimes you're, hey, what's going on, everybody? And you're trying to motivate people. But but again, there's a reason for it all. And it's to benefit the audience because, John, why? Because it's not about the me. job. It's, it's not a about job. me. It's a job. I know it's not about me. I'm I'm skipping. It's a job. I'm skipping to the you know the it's a job, but it's not about me. It's not the me show. Well, it it it's your personality is a part of it, but not the main part of it. Yeah. I know I this is. No, I, I, I agree. After all these years, this is just what I've come up with. However, I do go out there, and I say funny stuff sometimes on the microphone. I, I'm, I'm a friendly guy. I have to have a rapport with the audience. Oh, certainly. Otherwise, why hire you over someone else if you're not right. making I, a connection? And there's um, a certain cultivation uh, of that relationship that needs to happen, and it's on me. Mm-hmm. It's not on the audience. It's not for the audience to make nice with me it's for me to make nice with the audience yeah very good point i'm a good guy and i'm approachable and i'm here for him and i'm friendly and whatever and i'm into it and i'm here to help and i'm bobbing my head you know even though i hate the song but i'm bobbing my head because you all like it and but it's about them because it's a job okay just grabbing something okay what do we have next on our list Here's where it starts to get a little more heavy. Oh, we like heavy. Yeah. Okay. And I wrote this down. Know the difference between too expensive and can't afford it. What do I'm what am I talking about here? So as a DJ who's been out there for a very, very long time, most of you can probably relate to a client. Or a potential client at one point saying to you, once you quote them a price, for instance, oh, that's too expensive. Whether it be for your services or an add-on or whatever the case might be. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, I got to thinking about this. And someone saying it's too expensive is a lie. And here's why. What they're essentially doing is presenting you with an opinion disguised as a fact. It's too expensive as a statement. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone were to say to you, I can't afford that, that's fine. It's Or that's not in my budget, that's fine. But the fact that you can't go out and buy a new car doesn't mean new cars are too expensive. It means you can't afford a new car. To determine whether or not a new car is... Uh, price right, I suppose you could really dig in and find out what the production cost of that vehicle was from the time it was designed to the time it drove off the showroom floor. You take all that, you add it up, and you think about what the price of the car was, and you say to yourself, okay, well, was that too expensive? If the MSRP on a car was $50,000 and you spent $70,000 on or they had an advertiser of $70,000, that's probably too expensive because MSRP is 20000 less. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it's a lie. I can't afford it. It's not in my budget. Those things make sense. Sure. But it's too expensive is a lie. Mm-hmm. It's too expensive for me is the statement. It's, a, it, or it's, it's, it's an opinion. It's, a fa- it's presented as that. And it's about me, not about everybody. When you say something is too expensive... You're putting the blame on somebody else. Right. It's not my fault. It's just too expensive. No, it's your fault. <laughs> because you can't afford it. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. So, you know, potential clients will say these things to you. And stupid us, we start listening. And then what happens is we start to race to the bottom on our pricing. And we figure out ways to cut costs and we cut our own salaries and we start buying junk because the expensive stuff we can't afford to buy anymore. And we race to the bottom because people are lying to us. 
They're presenting opinion as fact, and it's a lie, and it's wrong. You shouldn't do it. Since we're on the subject, this also goes for uh, DJs when it comes to purchasing items for their business. Mm-hmm. You know how many DJs ask me about this, these lowest common denominator speakers out there? Oh, yeah. Like for sure. the stuff that's like really, really inexpensive. What do you think of the this, this, this? I think it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's shitty. I think the only reason anybody would even look at this is because they've talked themselves out of purchasing something of even moderate quality. Mm hmm. What do you want me to say? It sucks. That's why it's priced like that. And then there was some, oh yeah, but that speaker is too expensive. No. Either it's not in your budget or you refuse to spend that on it. It's not too expensive. Going back into the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I think that, and that is not just for DJs. That's for anybody in business. Don't let people brainwash you with this too expensive stuff. It's a lie. Hmm, that, that's that's an interesting. I told you it was heavy. It was heavy, and it was it was it's good. Been on my mind for it's been on my mind for a day. I almost vlogged about it. And I thought, no, I'll save it for the show. Yeah, I, I think that's that's wonderful, wonderful advice, and a great thought. I could do a seminar on this you could. and charge people. You could. You could charge them a dollar fifty, and they'd say it's too $1. expensive. A dollar fifty, and they'd say, it's "But that's too expensive. Too damned expensive." I gave it to you for free. <sighs> Maybe Gordon Ramsay and Ben Still could do something with that. But Maybe we'll they could. I, I yeah, the, the, the we'll Ben Still fixes your stuff. We'll talk about that in another that's, time. That's yeah, that's next week's topic. But but no, I mean, it's a lie. Yeah, it's too expensive for me. Or you could say, "Hey, that's expensive," and and to say that you're saying. To me, that's expensive. To me, my health insurance is expensive. Mm -hmm. It is. It costs a lot of money for me on my income to purchase my health insurance. Oh, yes. Now, to a millionaire, it wouldn't be expensive. Not a bit. They wouldn't notice it. Is my health insurance too expensive? It might be too expensive for me, but... In general, it's not too expensive for everyone. To, yeah. What is too expensive for everyone? It just the whole concept of too expensive as a general term doesn't make any sense in any context. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. So ignore that. Whenever it goes in your ear, let it go right out the other one. And just translate. When anyone ever says to you, too expensive, what they really mean is, I can't afford it. Or I refuse to pay that much for it. And that, yeah, and those are two completely different things too. Because completely they, different things. They could afford it, but they choose not to, and that's and that's a valid decision. Mm. You've, 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 I haven't raised my voice on that one. Yeah, you've you've actually been putting some thought into this. Yeah, that's that's pretty good stuff. Okay, we're at number <laughs> five, and. Then we're going to get to the list. I think we've got like 15 things to talk about after that. Okay, I got one more. Yep. And it, it, everything just ties in one after the other. I'm yes. trying to make this stuff flow very nicely. Keeping in mind that it's, it's, it's about what, you're, what you can afford and what you're willing to spend. Go for the best and go for your best too. So I understand that you know, some of us are frugal. I'm pretty frugal in my life, but my newest vehicle is a 2013 or 2003. Mm -hmm. It's my newest vehicle. Now, granted, I like to work on it and it's running better than a lot of vehicles half, their, half that age. And it looks better than vehicles half that age. Um, but I'm frugal. I mean, you know, I frugal is... I'm, I'm just I'm careful with what I have and and I compromise in some areas so I can have more in other areas sure so there's a local grocery store by me right it's blocks away okay I can't afford to shop there at those prices I drive to the next well a couple towns over really it's about a 15 minute drive to this warehouse where I can buy anything 
for a lot less money than what I have to spend at the grocery store two blocks away. Right. The hipster, trendy, little Brooklyn grocery store. Right. Yeah. That's just being a smart consumer for me. I'm just, you know, I mean, this, this right here, it costs a dollar sixty less at my warehouse place than it does up the road. And if I buy eight of them, well, there you go. There you go yeah. I mean, I've saved twelve dollars mm -hmm. right there. So, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, it's okay to to be wise, you know, penny wise, uh, but you don't want to be dollar stupid about things. Um, having said that, it, it's really uh, important to not sacrifice quality when you are presenting your product to a client. It's not just you; it's also your music, the quality of your music, as far as uh, you know sound quality of your music does it sound good does it sound bad uh, your sound system the appearance of your sound system your light show the appearance of your light show your reliability of all these things this is important this is part of the product you are the ultimate product mm -hmm. but that's all also part of your product don't make compromises on this do the best you can do and don't just go for the cheap i see a lot of people looking at oh have you seen this this week? It's on Facebook. I see it here and there. Hey, check it out, guys. Here's a $50 moving head. Have you seen this? Oh, yeah. They've, they've, they've done talking about them. What? Oh, Why yeah. would you even consider this? Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're out there. The Chinese companies have been pushing them very hard here in the last couple of months. I bet they have. Mm -hmm. And there are compromises when those things happen. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, even if, you know, I mean, I don't know. Don't do that. <laughs> but also, I mean, beyond the equipment thing, you know, be your best. And that kind of ties into the whole thing we're talking about. Know your music. Have a positive attitude. Be empathetic to your clients. You know, understand that not everyone is going to be your client. That's important too. Mm -hmm. So if you hear something like, ah, it's too expensive. You can walk away from that or you can flip it into something positive. You can educate your client. Always be your best. Just be the best you you can be. This is uh, might be kind of a screw up job to a lot of people out there from their perspective. They may say things to you like, well, you're going to get a real job, you know? Yep. But uh, this is something I'm passionate about. I love this. This is, this has been most of my life, you know, it's, this has been better to me than anything else I've ever done. I've done a lot of things, but, but by far, this, this is the one, and, and I love it. So, you know, I, I give it my best. I do everything I can to, to provide the best product I can and to be the best DJ I can. And uh, if you can do that, I think, I think you nailed it. Mm -hmm. I would agree. And that's it. I'm done. You are. That was five. That was five. Now, let's go through some of our, our list, and some of them are going to fall right in, like Jazz, and we're going to start with actually the one that just came up uh, a minute ago. Uh, Jazzy Lamel mentions, um, uh, it's important to know when to walk away from a gig, in essence, when it's not, uh, not a, you were just talking about that. Yeah, not everybody's your client. Not everybody's your client, and I think that was one of the lessons that, as a youngster, it, that took a long time to learn, that one. Because it's like at, when you're first starting out, it was like, oh, my gosh, I got to take every gigs because I've got payments to make and I've got gear to buy and I've got this to do. And Yeah. You, you know how I, I think about that? As, as, a, as a less than attractive teenager, whenever a girl gave me some attention, that was my girlfriend. It didn't matter because <laughs> I didn't know when the next girl was going to come along and say yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. I wasn't very picky about things for a little while there. And and uh, I learned, and then you know that was not a good idea. Um, but yeah, don't be that way. I don't know. Just what she says yes doesn't mean that, that she's the right one. <laughs> oh, I just think and Hunter I had a question. Or the, I'm going to clarify. Do that. Like, yeah, like, it's like just because they're willing to be your friend doesn't mean you want them as a friend. You yeah, know? not so much because sometimes you know those not such a good idea. Yeah, you know, the guy who talks to himself out in front of the gas station, maybe you shouldn't let him in your home. 
maybe not. Even if he wants to come over and be your friend, maybe yeah. maybe he's not the guy to let in your house. He might be the one who comes and pees on your foot. I'm just saying. He might be that guy. There's always that one. Uh, let's see. Let's back up to the top of the list. Um, Larry mentioned early in the show, and I, I was copying and pasting, so I'm, I've got try to get names and such. But Larry mentioned the first thing a new DJ should know is their value. Figure out what your costs are and price yourself accordingly. And I think, I mean, Brian, you did a, a wonderful job breaking it down on a few of our shows of of – kind of establishing your price and explaining your price. Yeah, just to cost analysis. How, when did you start to, to per, kind of go at it from that angle compared to when, when we compared first Compared to just kind of yeah. trying to keep up with the Joneses? Yeah, that's the best way to describe it, yes. I was Anthony say Woodruff something. actually turned me on to that concept. One of our friends over in Germany, he's, he's British, but he lives in Germany. And uh, I don't know, I mentioned something about price or whatever. And he came at me aggressively. And Anthony and I are friends. I mean, we've we've hung out, we've gone out to dinner. Last time I saw Anthony, we were beating the living shit out of a brand new hot shit Jaguar convertible all around Frankfurt. I mean, he's a great guy. But but yeah, he came at me real aggressive, like, shame on you. This is what stuff costs. This is how you gotta figure it out. And I'm like, ah, you're an asshole. And then I got to thinking about it, I was like, you know what, he's right. I don't think his his numbers are right. Uh, well, they're not wrong, but, but I think yeah. they're a little aggressive. I think if I tweaked them a little bit and made them a little more uh, palatable for me, this might be a really good way to do things. And after I wrote it all out, it totally made sense. Mm -hmm. We are not always great business people. Sometimes sure. we're pretty good with music. Sometimes we're pretty good with empathy. And sometimes we're we're pretty good at just kind of sales or whatever. But we're not always great business people. Yeah need help and we need to listen sometimes it's hard to listen sometimes you don't want to hear what other people have to say but yeah he was right mm -hmm. i don't use the percentages that he uses he uses a little more aggressive percentages but i felt like the ones that i selected uh, when i break down that cost analysis the 20 percent or are five five percent uh, i felt like they were pretty realistic and almost anybody could swallow that sure. and it would keep people at a uh, place where they didn't feel like they were pricing themselves out of a market. Mm -hmm. And that's important because that can happen, unfortunately. Yeah, it can. Uh, continuing on, uh, Scott mentions a statement, uh, don't try to be the Swiss Army the Swiss Army knife DJ. Basically, the idea of I can do every gig and do it great is, is what I think he was meaning with that one. Agree. Um, Brandon mentions uh, learning the, that practice makes perfect. And in maybe not so much perfect, but practice is such a huge practice in, makes some makes improvement. <laughs> makes improvement. Yeah, I don't know if I I've, I've never been perfect. At yeah, I game, I, I think that's a bullshit phrase. Practice makes perfect. It's kind of crap. My grandpa used to say, and he was not perfect. Believe me. But it does make improvement, and and it, I think it, <laughs> practice makes improvement. And I think yeah. that's something that's that. I, I know when we first started, you, we practiced just a little bit, but nothing to the to the level in which you know my 15 year old's doing on the other side, where he's coming out and he's doing you know three or four nights a week, and he's playing for two hours a night, and he's doing mixes. Last night during this show, I'm listening to him doing mix, mixes in the background. It's like goodness gracious, I never even thought of putting those two songs together as he's laying one track down and putting another on top. It's like that's that was good. I got to write that down. Yeah, yeah. So practice may not make perfect, but it definitely makes improvement. Uh, maybe they came up with that when it was like memorizing multiplication tables or something. Because nine times nine is eighty-one, right? It's it's always going to be eighty-one, and if you say eighty-one, it's a perfect answer. So maybe that's maybe it was a math thing, but yeah, for for anything else, no, it just makes improvement. Makes you makes you better. Uh, Scott mentions don't try to be something you're not. Just some good, solid advice there. Uh, DJ Brandon came back with another here. Uh, uh, collab with other DJs. Yeah, absolutely. Something we didn't do when we first started in many cases. I did. Yeah, so you did. We were we, did. we were basically, you know, they were the rat bastards down the street. So there wasn't <laughs> any collab. There wasn't any really communication early on, which is, I, I we were the, we were the we were we were weaker because of that of that uh yeah what when i first started djing when when i was just thrown back behind the booth you know my my dj voice was kind of like this i'd get up close on the microphone and try to do that i i, I did man i did that for a couple of years yeah 
you know, hey, everybody needs to clear the floor. It's time for couples only. <laughs> That's what I did. And, and then I started working with these other people doing the mobile stuff. And I'm watching them, and, and I learned so much from them. And I tried new things. And, and they would suggest I would try things. And, I would, you know, and then I would come up with my own stuff. Oh, it was wonderful. And every week I got somebody different. It was a great training ground. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of stuff that I loved, you know, oh, yeah. that they did. I saw a lot of stuff I couldn't stand. Yes. And I knew never to do that again. Precisely. You can always learn something. Sometimes it's learning what to yeah. do or what not to do. Yeah, sometimes you learn you never want to do that. It's, uh, but, but it's still something that you've learned. Absolutely. Uh, Scott had another one here. Uh, have a very open mind, which is definitely good advice because you're going to learn again. Empathy. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Empathy if tied into that one very well when it came to music um, selection and such. Uh, Reggie mentioned uh, the get your buy a subscription uh, to the uh, the paper or a magazine because there's some great resources out there in with the Disc Jockey News and uh, Mobile Beat with their online edition and DJ Times. So there's a lot of stuff there. Um, uh, how we mentioned this one, this is this is one we could dig into a little bit. Uh, be honest with yourself and don't gig until you're ready. Yeah, I'm I'm with I'm with them on that. Um, I, I will uh, put a little asterisk there, though. I could tell you that when I was working for the first multi yacht, they would put me on. I've told this before. They put me out with a different DJ like every week. Yeah. And I learned something new every week from these guys. And they progressively put me with worse and worse DJs. So before long, I thought that I was an assistant, but I was actually the lead, you know? Sure. And and I remember the, the boss came to me and he said, we need you to do this gig. I'm like, not by myself. I'm not ready for this. And I was a year in. And I still felt like I needed to learn more. And he said, no, you're ready. Go do it. And I did. And I did fine. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I lacked confidence or what it was, but I was indeed ready. But I didn't know it. I wasn't, I wasn't self-aware of that. I don't know what I thought was going to happen or what realization I was going to come to to all of a sudden say to myself, yeah, yeah you're ready. ready go. Like, like, you know, I don't know. All of a sudden you got the force or something. I didn't know what, I don't know what I was waiting for, but yeah, you can be overconfident. But on the other hand, you could also be underconfident. Uh, yes. So perhaps the lesson there might be uh, be self-aware. Be as self-aware as you can about your abilities, whether you're ready or you're not. Maybe if you think you're not ready, you're, you're, you're very ready. On the other hand, a lot of people think that they're, oh, I can do this, no problem. They go out there and boy, do they sink. Yeah, it's usually the, everyone's done it. Yeah, that's generally the situation is that we think we're much better than we <laughs> actually are until we get out in front of and then it's like, and some people are just completely, you know, oblivious to the fact that they suck. <laughs> Even when they're out there and they're like, wow, I'm rocking this house and everyone's just loving me as they're throwing, you know, th that scene from uh, the Blues Brothers where the bottles are being thrown up at this <laughs> the stage. bottles. <laughs> it's like, they love me. Look at they're sharing their beer with me. I love. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it's like anything else. It isn't just, just DJing. I mean, you can get in over your head with anything. You can get in over your head with, a, with a, an auto repair. Very easily. Oh my God, this turned into something that I can't do. I got to have my car towed. Uh, a home improvement project, a date. You could get in over your head. I mean, there are so many different ways you can get in over your head. And, and going out and doing a job before you're ready for it is, is a way. And it's not that you wouldn't be ready for it if everything, you know, if the stars align and everything went perfect, then yeah, maybe you'd be just fine. But Maybe you're just not ready because of those curveballs, those unforeseen things that just happen. Yes. Maybe that's what you're not ready to handle yet. If, if it's a perfect day, you'll be fine. But anything less than a perfect day, you know, it's all going to go pitang on you. So, I don't know. Okay, continuing on. Continue on. Uh, Chris uh, Simpson mentioned uh, one of the first things that Chris did was find a mentor, which, of course, is... Mentor. Mentors are always a... You are so Minnesota. Mentor, yes. And I should be saying it how? Mentor. Men mentor instead of mentor. 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 
Mentor. Yeah. Mentor. Mentor. Chris or, Simpson said he would it's find just a the mentor. <laughs> it's the accent. You're saying it just fine, but it's just yeah, funny. I'm going to go and do some karaoke. I'm going to do some karaoke in a little bit. Karaoke. 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 Dang it, I'm doing That's it right hilarious. now. hilarious. I'm doing karaoke. it right now. No, you said karaoke was perfect. Yeah. Okay. Mentors. Uh, twist yes. And, and that's what we were just talking about yeah. with, with some of these guys that I had, um, you know, early on in the mobile business. A lot of these guys that I mentioned before, they were ex-band frontmen. So they really had big personalities and, and they knew how to work a crowd and, and they knew what to say. And they were funny and cool. And I really enjoyed just watching those guys learning from them. But now it's cool because you have... Um, you got YouTube. I mean, there are all kinds of DJs out there that you can watch and yes. check out. And they would be great mentors. 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 Mentor. <laughs> now you're going to mess it up. Uh, next, we get Twisted Mickey. Uh, took off uh, from your empathy one. I think the more connected the music is to the person or the event, the more successful, which is really talking about your empathy for the situation musically. Well, perhaps, or maybe what they meant by that was, uh, if if you're doing, for instance, a country event, it would be nice if that's something that that you really enjoyed. Yes, that's that's very true. In a perfect world, yeah, that would be great. And it happens. And when it does happen, sometimes it's fantastic. Uh, other times, you know, it's okay to step out of that comfort zone and, and dive in. I know that you know I am not the best Latin DJ in the world, but I can do it. And whenever I used to go spin at Hot Water Warehouse Nightclub on salsa night, they would compliment my sets because they didn't sound like everybody else's set. Now, it's not that, you know, my karate was that strong in that particular genre, but I made different selections than the people made who did it every week. Certainly. And knew it like the back of their hand. Well, yes. And were. the crowd and the management found that incredibly refreshing. Yeah, but anytime you're going to bring Hank Williams Sr. into an event like that, that is refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what you were referring to? I'm pretty sure you were. I'm pretty sure it was Hank Williams Sr. I was playing Hank Williams Sr. for Salsa Night. Yes, I was. What, what doesn't that fit? I, 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 he it, seems a little wonderful. spicy yeah. to me, you know. Well, it's one of those things where, you know, I I don't know, I just made different selections. And I wasn't really aware what the other guys were doing. I mean, I just kind of knew what we'd listen to at home and what felt right, you know, from when I would dance, because I used to dance too. A lot Mm -hmm. of, did a lot of salsa, merengue, pachata, um, way, way back. Uh, And uh, I I knew, you know, I I always, the Latin stuff I always DJed by by ear, you know, because I can't even read Spanish. Oh, this has got a good groove. I like this. And I'd start the ones that I really dug. And then I would go back and just play those tracks for the night. And I had my rotations that I did. Sure. But it wasn't my thing. It wasn't my strong karate. But yet, it went over very well for those reasons. Those same reasons. <laughs> it was, I don't know. So it depends. I mean, that, that's, that's not always a, a requirement to have a good night. Continuing on our list, Jazzy Lamel, um, know how to price yourself as a DJ and not underbid yourself. Would be a great lesson. A great lesson, too. Because that's one of the common things we do. Is we get back to that, that where you were talking about uh, the too expensive and can't afford it. And this would lead right into that where we're going to run into that resistance. And the first thing we're going to do is say, okay, can I go $50 cheaper, please? I could maybe take a hundred dollars off. Yeah. And then, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know, when we used to sell, I mean, when you sell anything, I mean, uh, when we used to do cars or I did cars, there was some wiggle room sometimes. Sometimes yeah. there wasn't. Sometimes there was, you know, but do you want to be that person? You know, what I like to do, and, and I've said it before when I talk about cost analysis, is, you know, whenever a client says how much, uh, my response typically is this it can be between 850 to 1700 dollars it really just depends on the scope of work Mm. so let's talk yes what am i getting myself into and i'm going to give you the price that matches the scope of work that you're giving me and there's no there's no bullshit in here this is how much the equipment costs this is how much 
you know, it's going to cost me out of pocket. These are annual expenses, and this is my salary. If you want to take it out of my salary, I guess. But there's less argument about price when, when you lay it on the table like that. When you itemize everything, there's less argument about price. When you're arbitrarily picking a price out of thin air, yeah, they're going to argue price with you. How come it costs this much? Because I'm worth it, I think is the stupidest thing anybody could say. You got to break it down. You got to have empathy for the client. Well, let me explain to you why it costs this much. Here's my expenses here. Here's what this costs. Here's my out of pocket. And I got to pay myself. So that's where this price comes from. Oh, it's logical. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to bamboozle people with something that you plucked out of thin air yourself. Which, so I don't even remember what the. Uh, I just ranted. I'm sorry. No, you, you did. You were talking about depraising ourselves and, and not underbid yourself, and that's a big mm -hmm. big part of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Larry Lesniewski, I believe, and I'm sorry, Larry, if I didn't have your first or your last name in the first one. Like That's a Midwestern name if I ever that, heard one. That is. I believe that's from South St. Paul in that area. All right on. I, right I'm on. not sure where Larry's from, so, but there are, are a lot of uh, a... a um, Polish uh, uh, community down in that neck of the woods. So yes, oh, I live in a Polish community or an ex-Polish community. Yeah, probably not so much anymore because you've got that hipster thing going on because they all moved in once you did. Yeah, they're Polacks next door still. So. <laughs> uh, new uh, new DJ needs the ability to communicate first to communicate with a client to find out exactly what they want to be able to then to communicate to speak well on a micro microphone and to then sell themselves and their ability. So the communication skills. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely needed. And those are those are many skills that have to come with experience. Some of which you can learn through different workshops and things. But the, a lot of the ability to communicate and to be able to ask those questions and to be able to connect with people is somewhat innate. I would I would say because not everyone has that ability. No, they don't. Uh, it's unfortunate too. I don't know. You know, we're all different. We all uh, look at this different and approach it different as professionals. There are some folks out there who I, I think most of us would consider pretty high profile uh, folks in the industry, well known, well respected. Sometimes to hear them go off on Facebook, it's like, are you kidding me? Who are you? And and why did you think this was a good idea to say publicly? Uh, they, <laughs> yeah. Just does not you not using their best judgment sometimes I guess, um, so you know it, it, it's it's a matter of maybe thinking before you speak. Mm -hmm. Try not to alienate anybody. Trying to be kind to people. Trying to communicate well with people. I mean, the effective communication is what it comes down. To. Sure. Uh, to to create a positive result. And I like what Robin Williams said in, I believe it was Mrs. Doubtfire, when he was um, talking to some kids and somebody came and said, you did a pretty good job there with those kids. And he says, yeah, well, I don't talk down. I don't play down to them. I just play to them. Sure. And, and I remembered that. I thought that that is a really smart thing. I don't play down to my clients. I just play to them. Just a difference. I don't treat them like they're lower or treat them like they're not as smart or second-class them... citizens what have you right i just just play to them i just talk to them uh let's see uh, uh dave clevener clevener there uh treat your job david like a... clevenger let me help you with that me. clevenger Thank you. clevenger uh, David Clevenger, treat your job like a hobby and never work a day in your life i've heard that phrase used if you uh, love your job you know, do you a job that you love and never work a day in your life. Yeah. I don't know if I would want to treat it like a hobby because then my <laughs> hobbies I put on a shelf for a while and you can't. Really... Right. So. So. Yeah. Uh, but I know what he means. Yeah. I get it. Oh, yeah, certainly. Uh, Scott uh, came back with another here. I uh, don't uh, be cheap on equipment. And that came out about the time we were talking about the uh, the lighting, the inexpensive lighting. Uh, yeah, go, go for the best. And I mean, that, the best you can do, you know. And, and yeah, Scott, I'm proud of you for even bringing that up because we've had conversations and it sounds like you might want to be stepping up a little bit. Good for you, bro. 
Uh, Kirk Holzlin mentions uh, create a business plan, track expenses, and and cross-reference that to the income and really doing the numbers side of it. Important part of it. Yep. Very, very important part of it. It's the part that we probably hate the most. I think I think keeping track of our numbers and collecting bill collecting are probably the two things that I DJs... hate the money part. Yeah. I like the DJ part. I like the build part. I like the entertaining part. I hate the money part. I just money does not turn me on at all. It's not something that 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 I I chase. I just want to be happy, and money doesn't make me happy. Not yeah, not like talking about money makes me unhappy. <laughs> and that's what, yep. We end up having to do that two or three, or six or ten times a year. Or well, we do it on the show at least twice a month. It seems. But but it's it's necessary. It is the point. So, uh, yeah. Jesse Lamel one had another here. Uh, no two no two DJs are the same. Try to differentiate and be more be a unique DJ with your brand, and not yeah. labeling yourself as a regular DJ. It's good marketing tip. Yep, good good there. And uh, Larry came out with another here, of. Um, uh, find out what resources besides music equipment are are available, and uh, and then also talking, uh, talking with the venue managers and legal and finance to get the help and understanding, basically what, what uh, they're they're needing and what you uh, need to do to uh, be successful in this this business. Okay. Yeah, the business part's never for me not fun. I mean, some people that's all they want to do. That's and I've noticed that there are people out there who do really well with the business part. They do really well with the money part. On the entertainment part, not so much. It's funny that way. It's like sometimes it's like you're either a great entertainer or you're a great business person. They're not usually mutually exclusive things. So, you know, I thought in a perfect world, maybe a really good business person and a really good entertainer could get together and do something pretty awesome. But that's not going to happen. Desmond just posted a great one uh, to dress the part. Yeah, and good idea. Yeah, it's a very, just a, a simple thought. But yeah, how many times do we see a DJ who you would expect to be dressed one way for a wedding, formal event, or something, and there's you know jeans and a T-shirt, which just isn't appropriate for that event. No, I've talked about this before, and, and Desmond brings up a great point. Um, but But I will say that I've done really well with doing almost the opposite where I come in and I under promise when they see me walk in, they don't expect much, but I over deliver and it blows them away because they were not expecting what they saw come out of me. Right. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, Desmond's absolutely right. You should come in dressed appropriately, um, dressed apart. They say dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Um, I think that's probably pretty good advice, but I've always kind of used the stand-up comedians as my, my muses, my muses, muses. Would they be your mentors? Not my mentors, my muses. And, and, you know, they come on stage kind of sloppy and whatever, and they're stuttering and they're, but, but there's a point to all of it. You know, I watch these guys and I'm like, you know what? Yeah. And, and as a teenager, that was a big thing because I was really thin and you walk into a room and they really didn't expect anything out of you. But it's like, pow, wow, he knows what he's doing. He knows his music. It's good. Uh, going into the Latin clubs, being the white guy. Hey, come on. I got CDs in my car. Uh, just give me a minute and it's going to be cool. You know, just, just three songs. And if I need help, please come up and talk to me. Blow the, blow the room away, you know, because I under promise walking in, but I over delivered. That's it, always just been very, very effective. I guess for me, and and uh, I think people prefer that to overpromise and underdeliver. You know, nobody wants that. No one wants to say, "Oh, this is gonna be great," and it's less than yeah. And it's no, that's, like it's a real put down. But yeah. if they, oh, this is gonna be <laughs> shitty, and they're like, "Wow, this is pretty cool," then it's good. And our time is just about up, so we're going to let Howie have the last word here and how he's, uh, what he threw out here and how he said... Uh, uh, like on Jerry Springer? Yes, exactly. How he gets the last word. And then we're going to start Howie throwing, Springer. We're going to start throwing chairs in a minute. Um, he said it, it's show business, and business is the operative word. 
running a business. So well put. Good, good words of advice here. Lots of thought, uh, very thoughtful suggestions. So I, we appreciate the input and thoughts and, and suggest all the good. Now what I'm doing I'm going to go I'm, write my book entitled Too Expensive. Yeah, you should. Available in hardcover. Yeah, soon. well, it would be, be, you'd want it available on Amazon, Kindle, or, you know, the Kindle. Yeah, but I'll, I'll sign it for you. Oh, well, that would be great. The book is about a paragraph long. Uh, you couldn't even. You can't even get pamphlet. your pamphlet. You could even get your rant w warmed up in one paragraph as you're winding up on this one. <laughs> it's a, yeah, the too expensive pamphlet. It's an, and the too expensive pamphlet. Oddly enough, it's free. So yeah. <laughs> it's a dollar ninety five. But there's a coupon for it this week only. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I took uh, posted those the uh, comments and such down in the the area down there, the ones that we used, and we thank you for your thoughts. In the and description? Sure. In the description, yeah. There's Sweet. Some good in the description of this video, you can find all the different uh, things that people suggested uh, that all new DJ, DJ should know, and the description of this video yes. below. Right down here. So click it, expand it, and you can see it. Yes, it'll be fabulous. Quit picking on Brian. I don't pick on Brian. He's the one picking <laughs> on me when I say karaoke. Karaoke. Yeah, I pick on John more than John yeah. picks on me. John's a nice guy and, and John John is a nice guy. I mean I'm the I'm the bad guy. And 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 then Juan comes in, he wants somebody to sell toilet paper. I don't even know. Like karaoke, you stupid yokel, it's karaoke. karaoke. You know, he's not doing that to me, I'm doing that to him. Yeah. Well we have fun. We have a good time. <laughs> Well, thank you for being with us tonight, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. And Brian, thanks for putting that list together. It was a good, solid list. That was. I, I, I hope it was okay. You did well. You did very, very well. Thank you. Exceeding expectations oh, oh. once again. Uh, did I underpromise and overdeliver? Perhaps you didn't expect that list. I, See, no, I, I did exactly that. You, I expected a list, but there were you had a more in depth thought on a couple of those than I would have thought. Not because of for any other reason than <laughs> than I was envisioning a young DJ. And as some of those points that you brought out, I wouldn't have thought those as my young DJ days. And I would have Heavy. thought that there was there was more you would have been more closer to what I was doing in my young DJ days where I was basically like, <laughs> I'm here for the girls. <laughs> you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, but nobody watches the show as that guy. You know, well, I was. people watching the show are, are, are a different place, and and uh, I hope that uh, I hope there was a little something in there. I think I think there was. Thank you very much. We'll be back tomorrow night with our Wednesday night show. So everyone, have yourself a great evening. We'll catch you tomorrow. Good night.